Okay, so let's continue on here. Uh, 24 hours has actually gone by since the last uh, film clip, or video clip. So I'm trying to determine now why the fuse blew, and I'm pretty sure it's a grounding issue um, related between these two uh, circuits. I think I was just coming around to the conclusion, the somewhat obvious conclusion, that I should reverse the leads onto the heaters from the way I had them. That's what I'm going to do here, but I'm going to make a little test. I just see where shorts occur. Okay, I don't see any short between the positive output of the one and a half volt supply. And I'll take a look at the negative output here. Okay, so the negative output so shows a short straight to the negative output of this. The negative of each of these is connected. But the only thing I can do here is just try this reversed on the way it was. I can watch the output voltage, and if it's not 90, I'll know right away that there's still a short circuit condition. In fact, um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to start without the heater's heating. I'm just going to apply the B plus and make sure we can get 90 this way. And there isn't something else going on that I haven't figured out yet. So the radio is switched off. So I should be able to uh, power it up. I mean, no current flow. should see 90 on the meter, or 85 actually is what it's set to. 85 on the meter. Turn on the radio and see the 85 change a wee bit to indicate current flow. Actually, it shouldn't be much current flow in this radio because uh, heaters are off there shouldn't be much current flow at all. So it should remain 85. Okay, so that's the theory. Let's give it a go. So we'll switch on the power first to the little power supplies. Okay, something didn't work there. <clears throat> what have we got? Oh, I don't have the voltmeter hooked up. Duh. I don't see much on the voltmeter that way. Okay, voltmeter's hooked up. Positive reading on the voltmeter uh, means uh, uh, the positive on the output of the uh, this uh, power supply is positive. It's going to be positive anyway, so why am I bothering even saying that? Here we go. I'm watching the meter now. But something not quite right here. I, I didn't see this come on either. Uh oh, that's not good. Let me disconnect one of these wires here. I'm gonna back the ship right up back to dock. I'm gonna start over here. 24 hours makes a big difference. Okay. Okay, so there's no connection between these uh, voltage controller circuits and, uh, and the radio. Here we go. I saw a little flash of this light and not much more. Oh my god. Tell me I've damaged this already. Let's disconnect one of these. Connect, disconnect both of them. Oh boy. Now I've backed the ship right up into the dry dock at this point. Here we go. Okay, so there's the green light that's come on here. 
Huey. Uh, let's just check the output of that, make absolutely sure. When you're doing this kind of work, you often find yourself, at least I find myself, reversing all the way back to square one again. To, uh, ensure that, you know, there still could be a connection through here for crying out loud. How do you like that? Okay, okay, turn off the power. I just realized, that even though I said I didn't have any connection to the radio, there still was a potential short circuit, grounding short circuit through there. And I'm not paying close enough attention here. So we'll put this back on. Okay, now there's absolutely no connection. Oh. <laughs> Let me paraphrase that. There's one wire going from the amp, I'm sorry, from the uh, power supply here into the radio. One wire, nothing coming back. There's no way current can flow down that wire. So I've got these two guys isolated. And I'll put the voltmeter back on. I hope the heck we see 85 volts here. It's going to be a sad day in Jim's shop. Here we go. And there's the 85 volts on the meter. Now, one by one, I will connect up the wires. So the next wire is then the, the uh, will complete the uh, uh, 85 volt or the uh, the B plus connection into the radio. Here we go. Watching the voltage now. Okay, it's staying up at 85. I'll turn the radio on. Radio is on now this on, watch what happens. Oh! <laughs> okay. Hold the fort. Now, that was probably a capacitor charging up. Wow, that really made me jump. Okay. More exciting stuff coming here. Still have 85 volts, so we didn't blow it. Okay, power off. I'm watching the 85 go. Oh, see a big capacitor is in here. So that's where that snap probably came from. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay, so we can connect this wire. I don't think the snap meant anything bad, but it's better to not do that. Okay, the radio is off. Wire is connected. So now I've got the B plus connected into the radio. The radio is switched off. We'll turn on the power supply. Here we go. 85 volts. Now will switch on the radio. That'll supply the B plus. Watch the 85. Uh, the 85 stayed perfectly. Good. That's funny, that uh, spark I got earlier is a little bit surprising now. So, excellent. So now I think if I hook up the DC uh, to the filaments, we should have a radio operating. Okay, so we'll do that one lead at a time. So we can detect a short if it develops again. Okay. Very quickly. No. Oh. Okay, don't put it there. <laughs> Boy, holy jumper. Don't put it anywhere. Oh boy, those are not good. Unbelievable. What am I gonna do now? I was not expecting that at all. Wow. Boy, if that doesn't fry something, I don't know what will. Now I'm all unnerved. Okay, so we'll leave it just like this. Radio switched on. Voltage 85. Let's leave that there. I'll get another voltmeter going here. This has become ridiculously complicated. Ridiculously complicated. OK, 
Okay. Run DC volts. 150 volts full scale on the meter you can't see anymore. Okay. And now you can still see this meter. You can also see this one. Let's see what 85 looks like on that one. So there's 85. It actually reads 84. So it's pretty accurate. That's pretty good. Let's read the output on our little DC guy. See if there's anything left or did I blow it already? Positive output is here. Holy smokes, that didn't look right. See that? Did I get my arm in the way? I don't know. I just seen it go right over. Why would it do that? I'm on the 15... 15 volt scale here. I don't know if it's reading the output of this. This was putting out 19 volts. If we see 19 volts here, then I'd blown this little circuit up already. That's 19 volts. Oh boy, okay. I think I blew that little circuit up. I think you watched me destroy this thing. It's hot as heck. Okay, let's shut it off. Okay, I can just hear the comments coming now. <laughs> You shouldn't have done this, you shouldn't have done that, you should have done it this way, you should have done it that way. I could write all those comments myself at this point. Oh boy. Wow, it's as hot as, it's as hot as can be. It's just, it's just ruined. <laughs> okay. So the price of these was the buck fifty for this, three bucks for this, five bucks for this. So you know I only blew a buck fifty's worth of stuff here. Doesn't necessarily mean we're over and done with. Maybe another way to derive uh, the right voltage to run these tubes, but uh, wow. That's a little bit scary. I think for now all I can say is I've blown it and we're not going to be able to use the uh, method that was intended unless we order another one of these and blow it up or figure out a different way to power the uh, power the tubes. Last time I powered them with a battery. It happens to be this exact battery. A little bit of solder in either end. Yeah, okay, lots of thoughts going through my head here. I'm not actually saying everything. I'm thinking too many thoughts to say them all. So uh, I think I'm going to think about this a little more before I go any further, and I'll enjoy reading all the comments of things I could have done differently that would have prevented me from blowing that thing up. Anyway, well, I think I'll shift over to 